Greetings everyone, I am Professor T.J. Wilkins and this is Drawing the T-Shirt Flat Part 1. Click Open. Scroll down to Woman JPEG. Click Open. Command or Control minus to zoom out. Let's make the artboard larger. Go to File. Document Setup. Edit Artboards. Drag out the corners of the artboard. Control or Command Plus to zoom in. Hold down the spacebar and drag the image to the left. Make sure the Essentials Workboard is selected. Go to Window and select Layers. Then go to Window and select Properties. Next, go to Window and select Swatches. In the Swatches panel, click on the Library icon. Scroll down to Gradients. Select Fades. Drag the Fades panel under Swatches, then select Fade to Black 2 and drag it into the Swatches panel. Close the panel, then open the library again. Scroll down to Default Swatches and then select Art and Illustration. Command or Control Plus to zoom in closer to the croquis. And use the space bar to position it so that it's pretty much in the middle of the screen. Press Command or Control A on the keyboard to select the image. In the Properties panel, change the opacity to 35%. Then go to the Layers panel and lock the layer. Go to the bottom of the Layers panel and click the Create New Layer icon to create a new layer. Press Command or Control R on the keyboard for the ruler. Click and drag a vertical guide to the middle of the croquis. Notice that the guide does not move. That's because it's currently locked. To unlock, Go up to the top menu and click View. Scroll down to Guides, Unlock Guides. Now you can move the guides from right to left or wherever you want to place it. To lock the guides again, go to View, scroll down, select Lock Guides. The guides are now locked. Press P on the keyboard for the pen tool, or go to the tools bar and select a pen tool. At the bottom of the tools bar, the fill and stroke are currently empty. Add a black color to the stroke, but keep the fill blank. Usually when you click upon a fill or stroke, the color panel appears. So just place the color panel underneath the swatches panel. Go to the properties panel and change the stroke to two points. Place the pen tool on the shoulder between the princess seam and the neckline. Click and drag a little past the armhole. Then click again to create an anchor point. Drag down to the bottom of the armhole, click and hold, then pull the handle to the left to create the sh armhole shape. Move the mouse back and click on the last anchor point, then drag down to create the side of the t-shirt. Click, then press V for the selection tool. Click on a blank space to deselect. Press A for the Direct Selection tool or select it in the Tools panel. I need to select the path that starts at the shoulder and ends at the underarm. That path forms the armhole shape. 
Click at a middle spot between the shoulder and the underarm to select. Press Command or Control C to copy. Then press Command or Control F to paste in front. A copy of the armhole path is now pasted in front of the original path. Press P for the pen tool. Let's create the sleeve. Click on the anchor point at the top. Then drag downwards to the left and click. Drag down for the sleeve opening. Click and pull the handle to create a soft curve. Click and drag right to connect to the bottom of the armhole and close the path. Let's adjust the sleeve. Go to the Tools panel and drag out the Pen Tools group. Select the Anchor Point tool. Click on a midway point at the top of the sleeve, then drag upwards to create a soft curve extending from the shoulder. Then click and pull outward at the sleeve opening. Press V for the Direct Selection tool, then click on a blank space to deselect. Go to the Layers panel and click off Layer 1 Visibility to see what you've drawn so far. Okay, this looks good. Turn the visibility back on. Let's add some stitching at the armhole opening. Press A for the Direct Selection tool or select it in the Tools panel. Let's select only the path at the end of the sleeve. Click on a midway point on the sleeve opening, then press Ctrl C or Command C to copy and then Command F to paste in front. Click on the path and drag it forward on the sleeve hem. Then go to the Properties panel and click on Stroke. Click dashed line in the Stroke panel. Change the dash to two points, the gap to two points, and the weight to one point. Click on a blank space to close the panel, then click again to deselect the path. Use the selection tool to select all of the paths. Go to the tools panel and drag out the reflect tool group. Select the reflect tool. Then hold down the alt or option key and click on the center guide. Then select copy. Okay, so this is half of a star. If I want to make a copy of it or reflect it, I will have to select it with the selection tool. Then click on the reflection tool and make a copy. Right now, this is the point of reference, right? So if I make a copy, it copies right around the range of the point of reference. Now, I wanted the copy to automatically land on the opposite side of the star. To make that happen, what I would have to do is hold down the Alt or Option key and then click anywhere on the center guide. This changes the point of reference to the center guide. Then hit Copy in the Reflect panel. And there we go. So if I was to hide the guide, there you go, now I have a full star. Press V for the selection tool, then select the two points at the neckline, then Command J, Control J to join. Select at the bottom, then Command or Control J to join. Click on a blank space to deselect. Select the Anchor Point tool. Go to the neckline, click at the middle, and pull down to create a scoop neckline. Go to the hem, click on the middle, and pull down to create a soft arc. Go to the Layers panel and turn off the first layer's visibility to see what the t-shirt looks like so far. Hit Command or Control semicolon to hide the guides, or go to View, Scroll down the guides and select Hide Guides. Let's create the back neckline. Press A for the Direct Selection tool. I need to select only the scoop neck and not the shoulders. To do that, click at a midpoint on the scoop neck. 
Then press Command or Control C to copy, and then Command B as in boy to paste in the back. Another way to paste in the back is to go to Edit in the top menu and then scroll down to Paste in Back. Hit Command or Control J to join the back neck. Press Command or Control Plus to zoom in at the neck. Notice that the corners at the neck look sharp. To fix this, go to the Properties panel, click on Stroke, then select Round Join. Now the back neck corners are rounded. Click on Stroke to close the panel. This area represents the back of the t-shirt. Let's fill it with a gray color. Make sure the back neck is still selected, then go to the Tools panel and click on Fill. Use the color picker to select a gray color. Press OK when you're done. Press Command or Control minus to zoom out. Then select the Anchor Point tool. Click in the middle of the back neck and drag down to create a scoop neck. Press V for the Selection tool, then click on a blank space on the artboard to deselect. This is what we have so far. Let's add some color to see if the, all the paths are closed and if the stitching are on top. Click on the path for the shirt body, then go to the swatches panel and choose any color for a fill. Click on the path for the sleeve to select, then add any color. Do the same for the next sleeve. So this looks good. My stitch lines are still visible and I can still see all of the necessary seam lines. Let's go over some issues you may face while working. First, let's talk about selecting. So currently there are no fill inside of the objects. Here's the body and here's the sleeves. Um, there is a fill inside of the neckline. So if I wanted to add the fill inside of the shirt, the body of the shirt, I would either have to click on the path, directly on the path, or the selection tool to select the body, right? If I went like this, I can select the body. Um, if I just click on the inside of the item and try to add color, nothing's going to happen because it's not selected, right? So once again, I would have to click on the path and add color or use the selection tool to select part of the the object and that will actually select the whole thing and then add color so let's go ahead and add color inside of the sleeves I'll select this sleeve and add color to it and I'm gonna select the other sleeve and add color now notice that the color went over the stitching. I want to be able to see the stitching. And the reason why the fill went over the stitching is because the stitching is not placed in the front. So to fix this issue, press the forward slash key to remove the fill, or you can go to the tools panel and press none. And that removes the fill. Then click on the stitching Command or Control X to remove. Command or Control F as in Frank to paste in front. Then click on the sleeve and add color. The Properties panel can also be used to arrange items. To do that, go to Window, scroll down to Properties and select. Also, let's use the, the layers as well. So go up to Window and select Layers. Once again, I cannot see the stitching on the sleeve. So there's several ways to find it. I could select the sleeve and, of course, turn off the fill. But sometimes that doesn't work because there may be something else on top of the path. So another way to find this is through the Layers panel. 
Within each layer, there are sub-layers. To find the stitch for the path, I can scroll down and search within my sub-layers. And here it is right here. So to select it, I'll have to click within the circular icon, the far right, and there it is, it's selected. Now I can go to the Properties panel, scroll up, select Arrange, and bring to front. And there it is. Now it's in the front of the sleeve. Everything looks good, so remove the fill. Press Command or Control Plus to zoom into the neckline. Let's create a rib for the neckline. Press A for the selection tool. Click in the middle of the back neckline to select only the back neck. Press Command or Control C, then Command or Control F to paste in front. The fill is still on, that's why there's color at the top of the path. To remove that, go to the Tools panel, click on the fill, and click None. I just noticed the stroke in the back is 1 when it's supposed to be 2. In the Properties panel, I'm just going to change it to 2. Make sure the new path is still selected. Then, go up to the top menu, select Object, scroll down to Path, then Offset Path. The new path is too large for the neckline, so in the Offset Path panel, change Offset to 0 0.08. Let's check the preview. The offset creates an evenly distanced closed path around the open path, which was the previously selected back neckline. Click OK when you're done. Press V for the selection tool. Select the new shape. Then go to the tools panel and fill it with white. Then select the back neckline. Go to the Tools panel and click on Stroke. Select Dashed Line. Make sure the dash and gap are two points. Then increase the weight to 11 points. Click on Stroke to close the Stroke panel. Press Command or Control X on the keyboard to cut. Click on the offset shape to select. Go to the Tools panel and click on the Draw Inside icon. The brackets indicates that Draw Inside is activated. Press Command or Control V, as in Victor, to paste. The path got pasted above. Click and drag down to fit into the shape. Click on the blank space to deselect. Select the back rib. Then press the down arrow on the keyboard to fit it into the back neck. Click on a blank space to deselect. Click on the body outline and add a white fill. Then click on a blank space to deselect. Let's add the front rib. Select only the front neckline. To do that, press A for the Direct Selection tool. Then click in the middle of the front neckline. Press Command or Control C to copy. Then Command or Control F to place in front. The fill is still on and it's covering the back neck. So then just go to the Tools panel, click on the fill, and then select None. Then go up to the menu bar, click on Object, scroll down to Path, then select Offset Path. Fill the new path with a white fill. Press V for the Selection tool and click on the front line to select it. Go to the Properties panel and click Stroke. Select Dashed Line. Make sure the dash and gap are two points. 
change the weight to 15 points, then click stroke to close. Command or Control X to cut. Select the front neck band. Then go to the Tools panel and select Draw Inside. Press Command V to paste. If necessary, click on the path on the inside and drag down to adjust the rib. Click on a blank space to deselect. Select the neck band, then click stroke in the properties panel. Then select round join to round the edges of the neckline. If necessary, click on the neckline and drag down to adjust. Press A for the direct selection tool. Then adjust the anchor points at the neckline so that the rib blends into the shoulder. Press Command or Control minus to zoom out. The shirt looks a bit long. To adjust the length, select the hemline or the bottom of the t-shirt with the direct selection tool. Then use the up arrow to shorten the length of the t-shirt. Click on a blank space to deselect. Let's add double stitching at the hemline. Press A for the direct selection tool. Then click in the middle of the hemline. Press Command or Control C to copy and Command or Control F to place in front. Press V for the selection tool. Then press the up arrow on the keyboard to drag up the path. Then hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag upward to make another copy. Press I for the eyedropper tool, then click on the sleeve stitching. This transfers the sleeve stitching to the two paths on the hemline. Click on a blank space to deselect. Let's add color. Click on the t-shirt body then go to the swatches panel and choose any color. Actually, I want red. Click on the sleeves and add color. Click on the stroke for the back rib, add color, and then do the same thing for the front. Okay, we're almost done. Command or Control minus to zoom out. Let's add a little bit of shading. Go to the Layers panel and lock the second layer. Then create a new layer. Press P for the Pen tool. Change the stroke to 1 in the Properties panel. On the left side of the shirt, click and drag down, and then pull at the handle to create the first fold. Press V for the Selection tool. Actually, the fill is still on, so press None in the Tools panel to turn it off. Click on the blank space to deselect. Then press P for the pen tool and click on the far right of the t-shirt and draw another path. Pull at the handle to curve to create a fold. Press V for the selection tool and click away from the path to deselect. Press P for the pen tool. At the bottom of the armhole, click on the sleeve, drag down and create a arc just to create a little fold to indicate the armhole area. Press Command or Control semicolon to view the center guide. Press V for the selection tool. Then select the underarm fold. 
Select the Reflection tool. Hold down the Alt or Option key to click on the center guide. Then select Copy. Press V for the selection tool and click on the blank space to deselect. Click on the first guide to select, then hold down the Shift key and click on the second guide. Go up to the control panel in the variable width, choose Width 1. Then go up to the swatch panel and select the black and white gradient. To adjust the gradient, click on the path. Then select the gradient tool in the tools panel. Click on the path and extend to the left to change the direction of the gradient. Then adjust the color stops to create a soft gradient. Press V for the selection tool. Hold down the shift key, then select the next fold. Then go to the properties panel and change the opacity to about 39%. Adjust the location of the folds if necessary. I'm going to readjust the opacity. Honestly, the opacity percentage depends upon the color that's used. So even though I'm going to probably bring this down to about 26%, the opacity may be different for a different color. So adjust the opacity to what best fits your color of choice. Let's add stitching around the neckline. Press P for the pen tool, then click at the bottom of the rib at the shoulder and then drag to the other side. Hold the shift key to keep the path straight. Select the anchor point tool, click in the middle of the path and drag to pull underneath the rib. Press the forward slash key or go to the tools panel to turn off the fill. Press A for the direct selection tool, then pull at the handles to adjust the path around the neckline. Make it as even as possible. Press I for the eyedropper tool and then click on the stitching on the sleeve so that it's transferred to the neckline. I'm going to adjust the neckline a little bit more. So press A for the direct selection tool. Then click on the neckline, the stitching on the neckline, and drag it out a little bit. And do the same thing on the other side at the shoulder. Then use the handles to adjust it around the neckline. Press Command or Control minus to zoom out.